Thank you so much to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Anime profile pic person named Gilly asked me if I could make a review on the new Netflix horror Choose or Die. And you know what? People with anime profile pics get too much hate recently. So I'm going to give back to the community in my own way. Sure, Gilly. I'll review it. <laughs> Here's your review. So yeah, the movie's called Choose or Die. And it was directed by someone named Toby Meekins. This is his first big movie, it looks like. If you go to his IMDb page, it's basically just a bunch of short so yeah, I haven't seen any of this guy's previous work, and I don't expect that I will see anything that he makes in the future. The 80s. The 80s! Choose or Die is a sci-fi horror movie, and it's on Netflix, so you know it's gotta be great. Wait, there's no titties in this movie? I don't want to watch it if there isn't any titties. It's not very good, I don't think. <laughs> the music used in this movie is either a random rap song or electronic First crush with the preacher's son, first pun- so yeah, the composer was Skrillex. <laughs> the movie is based around a cursed game. And guess what the game is called? <laughs> it's called Cursor. Yes, I know, very clever. Cursor, yeah, real fucking original, man. <laughs> I'm pretty positive this movie was only made because a bunch of friends were sitting around smoking weed and one of them goes, dude, you should make a movie called Cursor and it's about a cursed video game because the word curse is in the word cursor. And the other guy goes, dude, that is so awesome. You're totally right, but we shouldn't name it Cursor because that would make too much sense. Let's name it Choose or Die. <laughs> this game has the ability to alter reality for the player and it does so in very strange ways. In the beginning, there's this old guy playing it. He's shown as a pretty shitty dad that does nothing but stay in his room and play video games. So, um, I'd probably be too mean to compare that to someone, right? And this guy has a beer bottle and the label changes to scare him. Yeah, this game just really wants to spook you. Ah! <laughs> That's so dumb. It can alter everything that you see. And in this guy's case, it just changes the label on the beer bottle. <laughs> Yes, we're off to a great start. The game cursor isn't spelled how you actually spell cursor. It's very unique. You see the O is replaced with a greater than sign. You can tell it's very high tech and cool because they did this. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like an O. Makes the word look more weird and interesting. This game has like a morbid Dungeons and Dragons text only feel to it. And it gives you a choice. You have to go down one path or the other. And if you don't choose either, you die. But they don't ever show us someone dying because they refuse to choose a path. So it might be completely false because every single time a character chooses something. Basically think of the beginning of this movie as a horror version of The Matrix if it were written by Jake Paul. We interrupt this video to bring you a message from our sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke is a monthly membership club delivering awesome bunches of top shelf goods from under the radar brands and it's free to join. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing and more. What you get is based on a preference quiz that members fill out when signing up. The box lineup changes every month and each box has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the US. So far, I've gotten three amazing boxes, first of which is called Alchemy, which is a bunch of home bar with pro-level cocktail wares. The second box we got is called Hibernate. It came with the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. Damn, Daniel. And as a bonus, it came with a really great smelling room spray. I also got Scorch. I'm a big fan of hot sauces. And this introduced me to six hot sauces that I've never tried. Before getting anything from Bespoke, the site will bring you through a bunch of questions and they'll ask you about yourself. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description or go to bespokepost.com slash ElvisTheAlien20 and enter code ElvisTheAlien20 at checkout. The URL should be all lowercase and the code should be all capitalized. Thank you so much to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Now back to the review. This movie stars Lola Evans, who's been in the 100 if you've ever seen that. And it also stars Asa Butterfield, or Asa. I'm not sure how to say it. Asa Butterfield.
But yeah, he's been in a bunch of movies I've seen. He was the star in Hugo, Sex Education, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. He was in Ender's Game. So this guy had some heavy hitting stuff under his belt. So I'm not sure why he's in this movie, <laughs> but whatever. And then three months pass. Lola plays a girl named Kayla and Asa plays a guy named Isaac. So Kayla's in a diner with her laptop and she's playing Cursor. This is a very retro game. It was made a long time ago. And earlier in the movie, they show us that Kayla and Isaac are very tech savvy and they just happened upon this very strange game named Cursor. So while in the diner, it's confirmed that the game is somehow messing with the player's perception, but also altering reality around them. It's very weird. It seems like the choices that the player has get progressively more disturbing. In the beginning of the movie, the old guy made a choice for his son's tongue to be cut out. It was either that or having his wife's ears cut off. So yeah, not much of a choice, really. Cursor is basically just a would you rather, you know, but what you choose will happen. Do they explain how this happens? Kind of. In a very dumb way. And I'll explain it later. Kayla's in this diner and she's given the choice between cake or coffee. Oh no, what is she gonna do? <laughs> and the menu for the diner changes, so it just says cake and coffee. They only serve coffee and cake. <laughs> Does it even say what kind? No. It just says cake. Pie flavor. She looks away for a second, she looks back, and the menu changes back to what it normally said. She tries to close the laptop, and then she's brought into limbo or something with her dead little brother, and he tells her that she has to continue to play the game. So she opens the laptop, and she's brought back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> These computers like mess with your mind, I guess. Then the waitress starts acting very strange. She starts breaking glasses over and over, and then Kayla is given a choice for her to continue breaking them or to clean up the mess. Kayla chooses for her to clean up the mess, so the waitress starts eating the broken glass that's all over the floor. Kayla tries to stop her, but then the waitress's boss wakes up, gets up, and screams like a banshee at Kayla. Are we up there? Put your makeup on a pig. You call it first world. Okay, okay, okay. What is happening? <laughs> Anyway, she eventually finds her way to the waitress, tries to help her. So I guess she won this level. She just wakes up and it's all over with. How did she win? What are the winning conditions? What? Oh my God. A cop visits her house the next day. And apparently this waitress died from eating glass because the game forced her to. The game also forced the waitress's boss to get up out of nowhere and scream. It's so weird. Anyway, it alters the player's perception and reality somehow because it's cursed, you know, it's just cursed. Then we get to level two. Kayla has to try and save her mother from a giant rat, I think. I can only imagine like a skeever from Skyrim or one of those giant rats from Elden Ring. We never actually see the rat, but it's pretty funny to imagine it. Kayla, Kayla, Kayla. A rat! There's a rat! There's a motherfucking rat! I'm gonna whoop your ass! So yeah, this game created a giant rat for Kayla to control. And she's on the phone with her mother, desperately trying to get her mother to safety. But at the same time, she has to make choices for this rat. And the giant rat is on its way to kill Kayla's mother. This game cursor also has a very cheesy narrator. And he speaks for the rat. It's pretty hilarious. There's no meat in the bathroom. Meat. There's no meat in there. Where's the meat? Meat. <laughs> So after all this is over with, Kayla visits her house. I'm not sure why she didn't call the police. Maybe that's against the game's rules because then the police could just shoot the giant rat and that'd be too easy. It's like breaking the game, you know? It's like using Bloodhound Step and a Mimic with a full bleed build in Elden Ring. And we can't have that. We need to play the game the right way with a dagger and no clothes on. So yeah, Kayla goes home and she's looking at all the carnage around the house. This is all due to this massive rat, this big pest. Hilariously, it says chew on the door that the rat chewed through to get to her mom. And <laughs> but it doesn't just say chew. It says colon greater than sign chew, you know, because it's a game. It's tech. It's a computer that's doing this somehow writing stuff on the walls. <laughs> and then meat is also carved into the wall. <laughs> what the hell? Look at me. <laughs> 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 Sometimes the game will spaz out for no reason and make one person hear an ear piercing sound, like in this scene, where Kayla hears it but not Isaac. It's time. 
Oh shit, it's time. Also, it tries to scare the players by repeating their own thoughts and words back at them. I mean, it's the cursed game. Cursor, the cursed game. It's really scary. Oh no, it really frightens you. The people that made this game were huge dickwads. Then we're graced with level three. This is where you can see a lot of comparisons with the Matrix. Isaac and Kayla have to choose between a blue door or a red door, which I can only compare to the red and blue pill thing. Nice job, officer fuckface. Isaac puts his ear to the blue door and someone whispers die. Oh, red's not so bad. <laughs> so then they choose the red door. It was a trick. So you know in horror movies, when a character sees or hears the ghost of a dead loved one, and so they mindlessly chase after it, I hate it when they do that. You know this person is dead. Your brains didn't leak out of your ears, you know? Reality before this moment didn't cease to exist just because you see them again. I know if you've lost someone, it must be very painful to see them or hear them again. But if you've been playing this cursed, fucked up game that's been messing with you nonstop, and you see a dead loved one, when the game has done this before, why would you chase after it? I don't think chasing after it will do much. Use your three brain cells, please. It's the game. It's not actually your dead brother. You dumb bitch. What are you doing? So yeah, obviously Kayla chases after him because she thinks she can save him or something. Like this game brought him back to life. Cool. And so she's gonna save him from the game. And then they get lost in random mist. I guess the game generated a lot of mist and now they're lost in the mist. Isaac is then attacked by Kayla's dead brother. She's then given the choice to save one of them when her brother is already dead. So clearly she chooses Isaac. At least she wasn't moronic to the point of trying to save her dead brother <laughs> again. So she chooses Isaac, but then she's attacked by her dead brother. Kayla then kills him. She strangles him to death again, cause you know, he already died. And they return to reality, completing level three. So then they do this dumbass hack to find where the game is being controlled with phone dial tones. I question the legitimacy of this hack. What? So they end up in a storage container facility and break into a random room without any way to protect themselves. Very smart. You know this game has been fucking with you immensely up until now. Why are they doing this and why aren't they scared shitless? Shouldn't they call the police and have them go here instead? Okay, anyway. And the music is hilarious as they enter this building. Bam, bam, boom, boom. <laughs> A phone can be heard ringing in the building. Oh my god, the Matrix stuff just never ends. And then they hear a voice message. So yeah, this is where the game was created, I guess. And they get their hands on a VHS tape titled Cursor Beta 1. So the explanation they give for creating this insane game that can alter reality and the player's perception and basically just everything is that they used random sacred ancient symbols to code this game. Yes, that's the explanation. Oh my god. I know it doesn't make any sense to question this shit because it's so stupid, but how could a computer read this random language. It wouldn't be able to. You can't just plop some ancient evil text into your game code and then it just magically works. It's like the computer read the ancient text. What? <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> so they watch this beta, beta video, and during the beta, the game developer has the tester make a choice to either eat the computer that's in front of him or eat his arm. And guess what he chooses, ladies and gentlemen? Arm. Excuse me, bitch! Yes, he chooses his arm. <laughs> Why would you? Wow. And when he gives the play tester the option to either eat his computer or eat his arm, the developer decides to stab himself in the arm, hoping that the game will reverse the damage. And since the tester is eating his arm, the game somehow reverses the damage that was done to the developer because the guy's eating his arm. But what if it didn't reverse the damage? <laughs> he just has this massive gash in his arm, so he's got to rush to the hospital. <laughs> wow, okay. Very smart. Smart move, bro. And where did this game testing take place? Did he put this on Craigslist and some weirdo was like, hell yeah, I'll go test this random game. Was Craigslist even a thing back then? March 12th, 1984 at 9.20 PM. Like what? Did he find this guy on the side of the road? Does this guy have family? I'm assuming the developer had him killed after he ate his own arm. Because if he didn't and just let this guy leave, I'm sure that would cause a lot of problems for him. But they don't explain any of that. It's just something that happened. And the cursed suffer, the more the cursor benefits. <laughs> 
so all the choices that the players of this game make benefit the developer in some way. So for instance, when Kayla's mom was being chased by the giant rat, this just means the developer had a rat infestation in his home and he wanted to get rid of the rats. <laughs> this doesn't actually happen in the movie, but I like to imagine that it did. <laughs> And when he had the waitress breaking all of those glasses, it was because the developer made a whoopsie and he dropped a glass of water on his way to play Minecraft. Did you and he wanted the game to put the glass back together because that's his favorite glass. You see, it all makes sense. <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> okay, so level four is absolutely insane. This level turns Isaac into a cassette and he's all distorted like he's a digital version of himself and he's a cassette at the same time. It makes a lot of sense. And Kayla has the choice to either fast forward or rewind. Isaac, rewind or fast forward. So she chooses fast forward. So then Isaac starts vomiting cassette tape, a lot of it. So then she changes her choice to rewind and starts going back inside. <laughs> oh my God. She then fast forwards again and he dies. <laughs> It sounds like I'm making this up, but no, this actually happens in the movie, dude. And then the level is complete somehow because Isaac is dead. No idea why the level completed. Shouldn't she have failed? Does she win the level when someone dies or something? Is it either the subject of the level dies or she dies because she doesn't choose something and then the level completes? I'm just guessing because the movie doesn't tell us. Upon winning this level, the game gives her coordinates to beat the boss of the game and she goes there. Why? Why is she continuing to play this game? This game seems awful. She doesn't try once to stop playing. She just continues to play it because yeah, she's having fun killing all these people. <laughs> it's time. Oh shit, it's time. She's not threatened to continue playing the game or else she dies. Very normal behavior. And the best part, the coordinates don't even lead to the right place. <laughs> if you use these exact coordinates, you end up in Shu District, Kazakhstan. Assuming the final boss battle takes place in America, the correct coordinates would have a second number negative, which would land them in Newcomb, New York. So guess who the boss of this game is? Yes, the old guy from the beginning of the movie. Apparently he's holding his family captive and they they've suffered some more injuries it looks like. They wanted to make this as creepy as possible and they kind of achieved that. His son has something over his eye and it makes him look really weird. And this guy's wife is not looking that great either. How he's keeping them captive, I have no idea, but he is somehow. And why is he doing this? No idea. He's lost his mind, I guess. Fuck the 80s! So Kayla arrives at this guy's house. She doesn't hesitate for a second. She just waltzes in there. I'm surprised she didn't roll up her sleeves before going in there. She's unstoppable. Nothing can take her down. Her spirits are high. I mean, her best friend just died. She had to kill her dead brother. She was the result of her mom ending up in the hospital because of some random giant rat that just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, she goes to the apartment and the giant rat is just gone. So Kayla has to fight this guy, but there's a catch. Their body basically act as voodoo dolls against the other person. It's pretty hilarious to watch. So you know if Kayla stabs herself, the injury will actually happen to the old guy. It takes them a second to figure this out, but it happens. When they finally come to this realization, she tries to cut her hand with the knife and it doesn't do anything. It only affects the old guy. But instead of jamming the knife into her neck, she tries to stab her hand. I guess she wants to prolong the suffering. The old guy, after getting his hand sliced, doesn't automatically run for his gun that's in the other room. Instead, he decides to slam his head against the table. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, they have this old guy's son rush into the room with the old guy's gun and shoot Kayla. If these people were being held captive by this guy, why didn't the mother just go and fetch the gun and shoot the dad? Clearly, they know where it is. At least the son knew where it was. He just rushed and found it. It took two seconds and it was loaded. <laughs> so clearly, it's not like hidden or in a safe or anything. Either way, the dad's like, no, shoot me, you idiot. Instead of just taking the gun from him and shooting himself in the head, which would be a lot more effective. Effective. Instead, he just orders his son to shoot him. So the guy's wife gets a hold of the gun and walks outside to shoot Kayla because she wants to kill her husband. So she shoots Kayla, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Like you hear her husband yell in the back. Do it. <laughs> But he rushes outside anyway and takes the gun from his wife. But he seems just fine to me. He fights his wife and takes the gun from her when he has two bullet wounds and his hand has been sliced open and his face has a gash in it. Like, what the hell? Does this guy not feel pain? I know he has some adrenaline pumping through him right now, but still. So he puts the gun to his head. <laughs> Oh, 
and he pulls the trigger and of course is out of ammunition. <laughs> Why wouldn't he let him stab him? Kayla is trying to lift a statue, so it weighs her down in the pool. Yeah, she jumps into the pool with a statue on top of her. She takes her sweet time lifting this statue, giving the old guy enough time to slit his own throat. So Kayla is at the bottom of the pool with her throat slit, but she's not drowning. The old guy is. And the old guy dies and she survives somehow. I'm not sure how you can live through your throat being slit and laying at the bottom of a pool. Bullshit. But hey, she's fine, guys. <laughs> My question is, why did she bother with the statue? Just jump into the water and sit under there. You won't feel like you're drowning. The old guy will. So just chill under the water, you know? You're fine. What are you doing with the statue, you weirdo? So yeah, Kayla's fine. She completed the game, and she's now in control of the game. And throughout the movie, there was this creepy drug dealer that was selling her mother drugs and taking advantage of her mother. So Kayla forces this creep to play the game, and he ends up jamming his face into a bunch of needles. So after suffering at the hands of this game, she's now using this game to her benefit and hurting other people. But she's happy now, I guess, you know? As long as it's not fucking me over, let it fuck other people over. As long as I'm okay, that's all that matters. <laughs> so another thing <laughs> saved. She does say that she's going to use it to only hurt bad people. So she's like a vigilante superhero that uses this game to fuck over bad people. Whatever. God damn it. It's so weird. Why would she use this game after all of the torture it's put her through? What? If this game killed my best friend, almost killed my mom, and it made me kill my dead sibling, I wouldn't want anything to do with it. Why is she using it? Oh my God. She should want to eradicate it from the face of the earth. But instead she's like, hell yeah. This game Game rules because I control it now. What? Anyways, guys, that was the movie Choose or Die. The acting ranged from decent to terrible. Fuck! I gotta say, it's kind of a neat premise. I'm not sure if this has been done before, but the idea of a video game that's cursed, that benefits the developer and curses the player, is a pretty neat idea. I just don't think they did it all that well. And it also reflects modern society pretty well. We live in a society. Just look at the release of Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the movie Choose or Die. Another amazing Netflix horror movie. Let me know what you'd like me to review next in the comment section down below. Make sure to check out Alien Clothing, my personal clothing brand. It's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N clothing.com. We released some really cool stuff based on some of my favorite movies, like The Thing, The Lighthouse, Alien, and Blade Runner 2049. So if you like those movies, and if you like cool shirts, head over to alienclothing.com and check them out. Cool Ooh. shirts. Shut up. Buy cool I shirts. Buy. From alienclothing.com. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible and i'll see you guys in the next one bye